good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we're going to be talking about my least favorite wrestlers of all time. Now, these are in no particular order. I think we have about seven wrestlers to go through, guys. And I believe all of them currently are or have been former WWE superstars in the past. So, I'm not going to include independent wrestlers or anything like that. This is going to be WWE superstars. And I'm going to run through all of them and tell you exactly why I am not a fan of the following superstars. So, with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Just a little disclaimer before we get started, guys. If one of your favorite superstars is on this list, I do apologize. Don't take any of this personal. I'm literally just giving my own personal opinions. I may have a wrestler that's one of my favorites that you may not like, and that's perfectly okay. Everybody is entitled to their opinion, and I respect your opinion, but I am just going to give you my own personal opinion. So please do not take any of this personal. I'm literally going to be giving you my personal reasons on why I do not like these wrestlers. So let's get into it. So starting things off, guys, we do have Hulk. Hogan. Yes, Hulk Hogan. I have really never been a fan of him. While he has put on some decent matches in the past, I say decent, but they were pretty solid. Like, uh, he's had some classics with The Rock. He's had some classics with other uh, great superstars in the past. I just have never been a fan of him. I thought that he was always overrated compared to other talents. Um, like, uh, compared to John Cena or Randy Orton or Stone Cold, I just don't see him in the limelight. I know what he's done for the business. I know what he has done in his personal career and I respect him for that for you know bringing the WWE and bringing professional wrestling to the limelight to a degree but as far as an overall talent you know in the ring on the microphone as a character overall I don't know I just I have never been a personal fan of Hulk Hogan I just think that he got pushed to the moon because of you know because of his size and he was like the first one of his kind so everybody just glued to him and you know he kind of represented America in a time that you know everybody loved him so very much and I can understand why people got behind him, but I was just never personally a fan. I never got the hype, and he is definitely one of my least favorites of all time. I just never, I, I don't know, it's just, just he's just not my cup of tea. So that is our first right there, guys. Hulk Hogan, the holster. Hulkamania running wild, brother. Next up, guys, we have Bobby Trashley. Yes, Bobby Lashley. Guys, I had to put Bobby Trashley on this list. I used to be a pretty nice fan of Bobby Trashley because when I was a kid, I used to think he, you know, it seemed like he gave a lot more effort. It seemed like he was a lot better when I was a younger kid, you know, maybe that's just because I didn't really know what made a better superstar or a better, you know, promo and stuff like that. Ever since returning to WWE, guys, he has just been awful. Like, he, he can barely cut a promo without sounding, uh, sounding so bland. He just is so boring. He, he He's put on, I think, one good match since returning to WWE, and that was with Roman Reigns at, I think, Extreme Rules or Backlash. I think it was Extreme Rules. And I like him much more as a heel than a babyface, but at the same time, guys, he is just, oh my god, he, he just is not, he's not a good character. He's very boring. He makes me want to change my channel. He literally cannot talk on the microphone, and I kind of feel bad. I, I want to like Bobby Traxley, but it's just hard to get behind him, man. Without the ability to talk on the microphone, you lose a lot of credibility with me. Well, Hulk Hogan is miles ahead of Bobby Lashley when it comes to talking on the microphone, I still, I still can't get behind him. So that is my second wrestler, guys, Bobby Trashley. Next up, guys, we have another big man, and it is Big Cass. Now, Big Cass, I never really understood the hype. I thought he was a great character on the microphone. I really liked him and Enzo together, but when they broke away, I'm not really speaking to the tag team Big Cass. I really thought that the tag team Big Cass is a part of Enzo and Cass was pretty solid. I thought that, you know, they fed off of each other great. You know, he was the power of the bunch, and Enzo obviously being the stronger talker of the two, but when he broke up from Enzo, and then he went on a singles run, and he was wrestling Daniel Bryan, and, you know, they kept doing the same big man shtick. Every storyline this man was in was, I'm big, and you are small, so I must crush you. That is absolutely stupid. I can't stand that storyline. Like, they've told it a million and 672 times, and so I just, ever since since that feud with Daniel Bryan, guys, I have literally just wanted to not watch Big Cass, man. I just couldn't get behind him anymore. And it was like they were going to push him to the moon just because he's tall again. I cannot stand that, man. Jesus Christ. So many talented guys on the roster, and let's push this guy because he's taller than the other. Ridiculous stuff, man. This is 2019. We got to get away from that way of thinking. But there's my next wrestler on the list, guys. Big Cass. Next up, guys, it should be no surprise. It is Lars Sullivan, the freak. And the same reasons why Big Cass is on this list, Lars 
Sullivan is just, uh, he's boring, guys. He, he puts me to sleep. He literally just comes out and beats guys up. He has no depth to his character. I know that he just got caught up in everything, but he was a lot better in NXT. The man's been caught up for how long now? Three or four weeks? Still hasn't even wrestled a one-on-one -on -one match. He just comes out, he beats people up, and I'm just sick of the shtick. I never really was a fan of him in NXT. Same reason why he's just a big guy running around just causing havoc, guys. I really would like to see some more depth from his character. If they call him the freak, maybe bring out some freak qualities like Gene Snitsky or get creative with it. Because as far as I'm concerned, he's just boring. He comes out to crickets. He has no reaction. Nobody's invested in him because he just he's the evil version of Braun Strowman. Which brings me to my next wrestler, and that is Braun Strowman. And I kind of have it, it's kind of unfair to put Braun Strowman on here, guys, because I kind of blame WWE for why I'm not a big fan of Braun Strowman anymore. I actually like Braun Strowman a lot, and I think he's very talented and a freak of nature. But WWE has absolutely ruined this man. You know, in 2017, he had all the momentum in the world. He was like the hottest act coming in. He was like one of the top five superstars in the world at one point as a, from an entertainment wrestling and character standpoint. I think he was ranked in the top 10 in the Pro Wrestling Illustrated top 100 wrestlers or top 500 wrestlers, whatever that thing was. He was like near the top and that's kind of absurd to think about when you look at him, what he's doing now, you know, running around doing the same thing. He, again, like I said, he's the good version of Lars Sullivan. He just runs around and he's been the bad version too. He just plug him into a six-man tag, beat up Roman Reigns, knock over this, break this car, flip this tractor, eat this ambulance, defeat defeat King Kong in the city. I mean, they literally do everything with this man, and it just is so hard to get behind him when he had so much momentum before, and they kept pulling the rug out from under him, and I'm to the point now where I literally couldn't care less about Braun Strowman. It's just hard to get behind him on WWE television, even though the man behind Braun Strowman is very super talented. And finally, guys, the last wrestler on the list you guys should already know, and it is Trash Corbin. Yes, it is Trash Corbin, guys. Ever since I've seen this man in NXT, I have never understood the hype. He looks like a middle school bully. He looks a lot better now that he shaved his head, but he's still walking around looking like a manager from a restaurant. He still puts me to sleep. You want to know why the Raw ratings are in the trash? It's because you have him main eventing shows and you have him as a huge character on Monday Night Raw television. Nobody cares about Trash Corbin. And you could say he's a good heel. No, it's I don't want you on my television because you're not good at what you do. He puts on decent matches in the ring. He has a solid in, he has solid entrance music and he has a cool finishing move slash move set. Besides that, the character is terrible. He has no like. He he just looks like a bully out there. When he comes out and he does this, me and Brad always make like a funny joke. He comes out, if he if the crowd says anything to him, he just like waves him off like that. I don't know, it's just not believable. It's it, I don't know what it is, but he's beating guys like Finn Balor. He he defeated Kurt Angle, which is whatever. I really don't I really don't care about that. Kurt Angle's retired now. It really wasn't a big deal to me. But this man has been main eventing Raws left and right. He's involved in these six-man tags and these authority storylines, and he ran Raw into the ground. Literally, when he was GM, I think they had the worst ratings of all time. And it's just terrible television, man. I don't know what they see in this man. And I know that he, uh, you know, like, I understand, like, he's got some decent talent. But there's way better guys on the roster that could be doing his job that I think would do a whole lot better, have more character, or better in the ring, and so on and so forth. I have just never been a fan of Trash Corbin. When he won the money in the bank, I was literally livid. I don't know if you guys remember that. I, I literally just didn't understand wasting the money in the bank on this man. But anyways, guys, that pretty much does it for my least favorite wrestlers, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Again, if one of these guys is your favorite wrestlers, congratulations. I personally do not like these characters or these wrestlers, but you may love them. Again, you may have a wrestler that you hate that is one of my favorites, so I'm sure that is the case. And I respect your guys' opinion, and I would love to know what you think of my selections down in the comment section below. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.